far as October 20th was concerned, the day that Brennecke alleges Greg was in Paris, no documents were produced. O'Rourke simply asked Greg where he was, and Greg replied that he was back in his Washington, D.C. office. Scott and co-consul Richard Muller, or Mueller, a Portland solo practitioner, went after the Beach House alibi and Greg's credibility with no small success. The defense case featured a retired Portland television weatherman named Rob Robert Lenat, who said under examination by Mueller that he was all but certain that the snapshot of Greg and his daughter Lucy that the prosecution introduced, plus two of Mrs. Greg and Lucy introduced by the defense, could not have been taken on the weekend of October 18th and, 8th and 19th because weather records showed conditions inconsistent with the photographs. More importantly, in the jury's eyes, Scott managed to turn Greg's long government service against him. A typical question, quote, now, you've had occasion to n not only uh, live undercover or lie to people or misinform people, if you prefer, about your employer and your occupation for approximately 20, 25 years or so while working at the agency. And that's expected of you when you work for the agency to give out misinformation, deceive people when it's in the interest of the national security. Isn't that correct, sir? That's correct, came Greg's, Greg's reply. Foreman Christoph asked why he didn't believe Greg and his beach house alibi, paused, and then said, well, he's CIA. Defense lawyer Scott worked hard and successfully to get Greg to acknowledge the intelligence operations notion of so-called deniability. That was the only reason Brennecke got away. Deniability, says juror Loney Top, a 21-year-old bank receptionist, Four of the five jurors interviewed for this article used the term in explaining why they voted so quickly to acquit. The jury spent five hours in deliberations. More than half of the time was spent reading a transcript of the rough hearing, declared Brennecke not guilty. Top, the only juror to find Greg and his photo credible, says she agreed with the others because of the lack of hard evidence from the government. Brennecke's acquittal was no triumph of brilliant lawyering by Michael Scott and Richard Mueller. The record is strewn with O'Rourke's sustained objections to Scott's phrasing of questions, his introduction of hearsay evidence. At one point, Judge Marsh asked Scott to brush up on his form. Quote, Consul, it's not an appropriate question. I sustain the objection. I want you to stop a minute. I want you to read Rule 608, Paragraph A, and formulate your questions pursuant to that rule. And the judge paused and then added, and B. Two Portland reporters who covered the trial say they were stunned by the defense team. Quote, assistant U.S. attorneys were coming into court to watch how bad Scott was. Unquote. Recalls staff writer Jim Redden of the um, Willamette Week. Mr. Brennecke was represented by two of the most incompetent lawyers I've ever seen in practice, says John Painter Jr., the federal courts reporter for the Oregonian. They won despite themselves. I wasn't.